minus one. Okay. Okay, really good. Okay, so guys, whenever you have a triangle and there's no 90 degree angle, you are looking at either sine law or cosine law, right? If you have a 90 degree angle, it's easier to use um, trig ratios that you've been using so far, right? It's easier to use the trig ratios where, but if you do not have a 90 degree triangle, like a triangle where there's no 90 degree angle, then you're, you're, you're better off using either sine law or cosine law. So this is the derivation. It's all here for you. You don't need to write it down. So basically, you have any old triangle, triangle ABC, and you draw an altitude, which is a line that hits the other side at right angles. So now you have two right angle triangles, right? And you know from the sine of B is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or H over C. And you can solve for the height of this triangle, the height equals C sine B. Now you can look at this triangle ADC, and you know that sine C equals H over B. In other words, H equals B sine C. So you have another equation, equation 1, equation 2. You can sub one into the other, so 1 equals 2, right? So C sine B equals, because the, the heights, H is the same for both trig ratios. They equal each other. You divide both sides by BC. Here the C cancels out. Here the B divides out. And you're left with this. So you, you see you have two-thirds of the sine law. Now you need, in order to get the third, third angle and third side, or sine A over A, over side A, then you just use another triangle and you go through the same process. So sine of B equals H over A, sine of uh, A equals H over B, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. Again, you have two equations. I'll call it three. And actually, H equals A sine B. I guess we don't have it here. H equals B well, I guess we don't have it there either. So that's 3, 4. 3 equals 4. Divide both sides by A, B. So the A divides out, the B divides out, and you're left with sine B over B equals sine A over A. So you've got these two equations. So notice this equals this. So now you can equate all three things. S sine B over B equals sine C over C equals, we got this guy, sine A over A, right? If sine B over B equals sine C over C, and sine B over B equals sine A over B, if these two are equal, you know sine C over C equals sine A over A, right? Now, you can use this version of the sine law, to, it's easier to use this one for angles because your angles are on top. And this is an equivalent expression of the sine law. Use this one when you want to find sides because this sides are in your numerator and that's easier to do. So there they are. There's your sine law, the two versions of the sine law right there. Right. That's basically, in a nutshell, how you can derive the sine law. If you want to derive the cosine law at the same time, but instead of using the sine trig ratio, we're using the cosine trig ratio. So here, you have any little old triangle. Again, it's for triangles where there is no 90 degree angle, right? But if you have a 90 degree angle, then use the trig ratios, opposite over adjacent for tan or opposite over hypotenuse, right? 
So again, you have any little old triangle, A, B, C. You draw an altitude from C to the opposite side. And you know from Pythagorean theorem, B squared equals A squared plus X squared. You also know that cosine of A is opposite over hypotenuse. And you can solve for X. So you have one equation. You have another equation. Then we look at this side. If this is C and that's X, you know that's C minus X. So we have, again, using Pythagorean theorem, A squared equals H squared plus C minus X all squared. You FOIL it. You end up with this. You group the 8 squared and the x squared together. And so you, you can substitute 8 squared plus x squared with b squared. So, And you can substitute your x with b cos a. So we're going to, what, basically what we're doing is we're subbing in 1 and 2. Sub 1 and 2 into 3. And you end up, and if we call this equation, equation 3, and you end up with what we get for the cosine law. There you go. I don't know why I wrote it twice. They seem identical to me. Oh, BC or CB, whatever. Right? They're both the same thing. So, use this one. If you want to find sides, it's probably easier. And use this one. It's just, and it, it's, they saw, they, this one is this equation, but they solve for cosine A. Use this one if you want to find angles. Okay? Yes, Ryan. Uh, we're, we're keeping the c squared. Right, we got Pythagorean theorem on this side, and we got Pythagorean theorem on this side. Basically, that's all, all we did. And we have one expression for cosine of a, which we solved for x. Right? So we subbed in. When we got this expression using Pythagorean theorem for triangle CDB, all right, or B, C, D, whatever you want, however you want to name it. Um, C minus X was foiled. And so we grouped 8 squared plus X squared is equal to B squared. So we subbed 8, we replaced 8 squared plus X squared with B squared. And we sub, we used this expression and we put in B cos A. So we just subbed it in to get this. What the, the cosine law that you're familiar with, right? Okay. So let's now do a couple examples. Here's, here's a summary. The sine law can be used to solve any triangle when given side side angle. So for example, if you're given side side angle, or if you're you are given angle angle side. <coughs> <laughs> or angle side angle, then you're going to, this is for the sine law, right? It's just that if you're using these ratios, then, then the given information has to be in appropriate places to use this equation. However, if you are given side, 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 or if you are given side angle side, then use cosine law. So let's take a look at this. Okay, if it, we're just let's just find B. Questions will be d worded differently. If they just say find side B, you just find side B. If it says solve the triangle, you have to find every unknown thing in the triangle. 
But for now, we'll just solve B. Notice there is no 90 degree angle, right? So we're looking at either sine law or cosine law. Now we're given angle, angle side, right? Given angle, angle side. Therefore, use sine law, right? We're not going to use the cosine law. It won't work for us. You know, we're not given the right information to use cosine. Right? Notice in cosine law, you need two sides. We only have one side. So that's, that's why we can't use it. But we can use this. So we can go B. Notice I'm solving for a side. So I'm going to put the, I'm going to use this formula equation over sine 55 degrees equals 7 over sine of 45 degrees, right? B, the opposite of B is 55 degrees, right? Because it's side B over angle B. The side B is opposite angle B. Equals 7 over sine 45. And you can just solve for B equals 7 sine 55 degrees over sine 45 degrees. And you can plug that in your calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode. 7 sine 55 five divided by sine 45 equals approximately 8 point. They want four decimal places, so 8.1092. Yeah. No, I'm just doing that for teaching purposes. If you jump right into this, I'll be thrilled. Okay, now we have, notice, no 90 degree angle. And we are given side angle side. So therefore, we're going to use the cosine law. So you know it's E squared equals F squared plus G squared minus 2FG cos of E. So F squared is 16 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 16 times 12 times cos of 25 degrees. And that is approximately, I'm not rounding to four decimal places until I take the square root. So this is about, remember, this is E squared. It's not E. We have to take the square root to get our answer. So this is 51.977.8978. So E is, take the square root of that, and you'll get approximately 7.20. 96. If you have any problems with your calculator, you can ask me later, okay? Do we always go do whatever the test tells you to do or whatever the question tells you to do. More often than not, it sides to one decimal place and angles to the nearest whole number, but just do what the question tells you. Well, it's asking for four decimal places. So you put your final answer to four decimal places. Okay, one more example. So notice we're given, there's no 90 degree triangle, or no 90 degree angle, right? So, and we are given side, 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 right? Side, side, side. So we're going to use, use cosine law. Okay. So you know cos of A equals C squared plus B. I'm trying to find the angle. So I'm using this version of the cosine law, minus a squared, all over 
CB. So that is going to be, now, you could do this. If you want to be fancy smancy, you could just go angle A equals the inverse of cos, right? C squared plus B squared minus A squared all over 2CB. That's up to you, right? That way you can just punch it in right away and, and you can just get all those numbers in 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 7 squared all over 2 times 12 times 15. So, and I'm just going to show you how to punch that into your calculator. We're finding an angle, and since the previous example said find the four decimal places, we're going to find this to four decimal places. But it's, it's nicer like this because you get your answer right away. You don't have to write cos of A equals a ratio and then angle A equals inverse cos, you can just do it like this. So I'll do it. I'll go, I have to go shift, cos, open bracket, open bracket, 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 7 squared, close bracket, divided by open bracket, 2 times 12 times 15, close bracket, and then I need a close bracket to close off the thing I'm finding cos of, and I get 27, it's approximately 27.2660 degrees. Can I explain anything better? Can I, it's a review from grade 10, does it all ring a bell? No? Can I, you're good?